Hello there, and welcome back to the Control Engineering Geek. Together, we will dive deep into the intricacies of tracking servo design for systems that have no integrators. The material along with the example and MATLAB code presented in this video are taken from the book Modern Control Engineering by Katsuhiko Ogata. Throughout this video, I will discuss the pole placement approach to the design of Type 1 servos or tracking systems. Here, I will limit the undertaken system to have a scalar control signal U and a scalar output Y with no integrator. If the plant has no integrator, in other words, it is a type 0 plant, the basic principle of the design of a type 1 servo system is to insert an integrator in the feed-forward path between the error comparator and the plant. From this block diagram, we can obtain the following dynamics. First, we have a state realization of the undertaken process. Second, we can assume a dynamic for the control law. And finally, the change in the error value between the desired reference R and the process output Y is represented as the variable psi as shown. In this realizations, we have X is the state vector of the plant, which is an N vector. U is the control signal, which is a scalar. Y is the process output signal, which is a scalar too. Psi is the output of the integrator, which is a scalar too. R is the reference input signal here, we assume it is a step function. It is a scalar too. And finally, A, B, and C are constant matrices with appropriate dimensions. We assume that the plant given by the state space is completely state controllable. Let us start designing our servo, or more precisely, our reference tracker. From the state space realization of the process, we can find the transfer function, which is denoted as G sub P of S. To avoid the possibility of the inserted integrator being canceled by the zero at the origin of the plant, we can assume that G sub P of S has no zero at the origin. Now, let us assume that that the reference input, which is here a step function, is applied at T equal to zero. Then, for t greater than zero, the system dynamics can be described by an equation that is a combination of both the process state space realization and the error dynamic. This is given as shown. In this video, we need to design an asymptotically stable system such that the process state x, along with error psi and the applied control law u approach constant values. Then, at steady state, psi dot will be zero, and consequently, the process output at time infinity will reach the desired reference R. Not to forget that at steady state, the dynamic above is given as. At this point, we need to remind ourselves that R of t is just a step input, thus, R at infinity is basically equals to R. Now, if we subtracted both shown dynamics, we can obtain the following relation. And if we define the following new states, then our last relation can also be written as following. And if we go back to our assumption regarding the structure of the control at beginning of the video, we can say that u sub e of t is given as shown. In this new formulated dynamic, the vector of x sub e and psi sub e can be defined as a new variable e, which is an n plus 1 vector, where n is the number of the states of the original process. Thus, this dynamic can be written as in which the matrices A hat and B hat are given as while the control law U sub E is given as. In this new structure of the control law, the control gain K hat has both the state feedback gain matrix capital K as well as the integral gain K sub L. So, if we want to write the state error equation, we can simply substitute the new formula of the control law in the equation of the E dot and obtain the following closed loop state matrix. Now, we can state the following important statement. If the desired eigenvalues of the state matrix are pre-specified, then the state feedback gain matrix capital K and the integral gain constant K sub I can be determined by the pole placement technique. However, this step requires that the system of the error E dot is completely state controllable. Thus, we need to check the rank of the following shown matrix, which has to have a rank of n plus 1, where n is the number of states of the original process. Let me now introduce an example. Consider the inverted pendulum control system shown. 
In this example, we are concerned only with the motion of the pendulum and motion of the cart in the plane of the screen. We can manipulate the movement of the pendulum via the control action U that acts on the cart body only. It is desired to keep the inverted pendulum upright as much as possible by, for instance, move the cart in a step fashion and yet control the position of the cart. The inverted pendulum system mounted on a cart does not have an integrator. Thus, to control the position of the cart, we need to build a type 1 servo system. To drive the mathematical model of this system and to keep everything as simple as possible, let us assume that the pendulum angle, theta, and the pendulum angular velocity, theta dot, are small. This gives us the right to assume the followings. And through the force balance and torque balance equations and without going through detailed steps, we can end up with the following two second order differential equations. And by defining the following state variables, we can write the following first order differential equations based on the motion equations above. Thus, the state space realization for the states can be formulated as shown. Whereas, the output is given as. So, we have the state matrix A, the control input matrix B, and the output matrix C as shown. Therefore, we have the following linear state space format. Let us also assume that the numerical values for cart mass capital M, the pendulum mass M, and the pendulum length L are as shown. Then, when these numerical values are substituted in the state space matrices, we will have the following numerical format of both the state and the input matrices. For the type 1 servo system, we have driven the state error equation which is given by the following equation where the matrix A hat can be written as, whereas the matrix B hat is given as. In this realization, we have the control law is given as, in which the matrix K hat is given as shown. Here, as we have four states along with the scalar output, thus we need four gains, K1 through K4, for the state feedback controller, in addition to a single gain, K sub L, for the servo. This figure shows the structure of our control problem here. Keep in mind that we have fed the position signal Y, which indicates the position of the cart back to the input, and at the same time, we have also inserted an integrator in the feed forward path. To obtain a reasonable speed and damping in the response of the design system, we can let the settling time to be between 4 and 5 seconds and the maximum overshoot to be between 15 to 16 percent in the step response of the cart. To achieve such performance in the closed loop, let us choose five stable poles in the locations shown. The first two poles are complex, while the last three poles are real. We need to determine the necessary state feedback gain matrix by the use of MATLAB. But before we proceed further, we must examine the rank of matrix P, which has the following numerical value. The rank of this matrix is found to be 5, which is the number of the inverted pendulum states plus the servo. Therefore, the system is completely state controllable and arbitrary pole placement is possible. The MATLAB code for producing the state feedback gain matrix, k hat, is given as shown. The resulted control matrix gains are Here, the first four values are the state feedback gains while the last gain is for the servo. Once we determine the feedback gain matrix K and the integral gain constant K sub L, the step response in the card position can be obtained by solving the following equation, which is obtained by substituting controller structure U into augmented form of both the process as well as the servo realization. If we assign the shown letters for the state, input, output, and output forward matrices, then we can write the following piece of MATLAB code that can simulate the response of the inverted pendulum system under step change in the control action U at the cart. Please pause the video for a few seconds to go through the lines of the code. In the last five lines of the code, we have x1 is angle of the pendulum theta, x2 is the time change of this angle, x3 is the position of the cart, x4 is the time change of this position or the linear velocity of the cart. And finally, x5 is the state of the servo. If we ran this code, we will have the following responses. The steady state values of the variables x1, 
x2 and x4 are all zero. On the other hand, the steady state value for the variable x3, which is the cart position, is 1. This is expected because of the present of the servo which attempts to push the variable to the desired value rather than regulate it to zero as the state feedback controller does. Lastly, the variable x5, which is the state of the servo, has a steady state value of 1.1. In fact, we can analytically prove this number. Since the following relation at steady state has to be true and with the numerical values, we can conclude that the control action at steady state is zero. From the assumed structure of controller and by substituting this value, we may have an expression for the servo state as shown. Thus, with the values of the process as well as the servo derivative states at steady state, which is simply a zero vector, we can have the servo state at infinity as a function of the input reference R. As we assume a unit step input, then we will have the servo state to be 1.1 as it was shown by the simulation. With the value of the servo state at infinity, we have reached the end of this video. I really hope that you gained something from this video. Please consider liking the video, sharing it, and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for the time spent on this video and see you soon in a new video. Hopefully!